person who handed you this card is under the care of a prescription puppet designed to help create a psychological distance between himself and the negative aspects of his personality. Please treat him as you normally would, but address yourself to the puppet. Thank you. There you go. Is this some kind of a joke? No, oh, hardly, love. Nothing funny about it. Stop it with the puppet. The work that Mel does in this film is so special. What you've done with him here and, and what he's given you here is really extraordinary. Um, can you talk about finding the voice of the beaver and also how little of Walter shows up in the film? Yeah, I, the operative word is what Mel has given, you know, I mean, uh, nobody knows better than I the contribution that an actor makes, and that's why I'm so sticky about casting. So I was very careful as to who I brought in. I knew Mel was right for this movie, and uh, he has this combination of lightness, which he knows how to do, uh, uh, the sort of charm and lightness and wit, the, the, the puppeteering that he was able to do, and yet there's a, you know, a, a struggle in him that I've known, uh, I certainly know personally, and um, uh, the, the sensitivity about him that uh, I knew I, I was longing to see again, you know, that I hadn't seen for a long time. The puppeteering is very important in this movie, and I, I think especially with your compositions, the way you frequently drop Walter almost completely out of a frame, and the the the, be the beaver will step forward. Yeah, there's a very interesting visual style in the film. You know, it is a formal style. It is it, this is not a comedy style looking movie. It's no. a very strong visual film that has anamorphic lenses and widescreen, and so you're able to have that nice depth of field where you can keep one person in focus here and the other person soft and change that back and forth. Uh, and also very easily keep two people in the frame at the same time without it feeling awkward and, and that's something that I wanted so that we understood that it really was Mel's character who was having the struggle not separating him really from the beaver initially until the beaver starts taking over and then he needs to be separated out. Yeah. I would imagine that for you working with younger actors um, mm -hmm. there there is a language that you in particular would understand in terms of uh, treating them like adult performers right. or treating them like equal performers. Right. Uh, and the work you get from Anton and Jennifer in this is tremendous. They're wonderful in the movie. Yeah, they're both really great in the movie, and I really can't take any credit for any actor's performances ever. <laughs> I'd like to, but I really can't because, uh, you know, I know that better than anybody. You know, the actor comes in and they give you themselves and, the, and they give you everything. Is it about um, creating a space then uh, that where I they feel safe to try things? I think it is, and I think a lot of that comes from the rehearsal process. And when I do rehearsals, I don't make people play charades. <laughs> I um, let them have a voice and change the script and really talk about what's working and what isn't. And I have conversations about their childhood and, you know, we talk about where the personal connections are. That's something that sometimes writers find hard because, you know, you really have to, it, it really is the actor's, the actor's place to really find the, the, to find the emotions in the film and however they get there is however they get there. You as a director, what, I, what I've really enjoyed about the work that you've done is oh. that you don't seem to have one voice that is in every picture. It is very material dependent, like you find ways to tell these specific stories. Well, the films that I've directed have been different and yet they are thematically exactly the same movie. I mean, I make movies about a spiritual crisis and going through these spiritual crisis allows you to get up, bring up, come out the other side and what one person might cause, might cause, uh, call a horrible crisis ends up being evolution into something greater and bigger and bolder. And uh, I think that's true of all three of my films, you know, that in the end, the message of the, all of these movies is that when you get through the spiritual crisis, the one thing that you learn is that you actually don't have to be alone, is that you are not alone in that. And, um, you know, when you are somebody that's felt lonely their entire life and has felt different your entire life, when you get out the other side, you realize that there's a whole bunch of other people that feel different and lonely too. And those are the people that you want to embrace and call your family. So I have to say, I'm very excited that yep. Five Corners finally hit Blu-ray. <laughs> really? Can't believe that oh. it took this long to, to be able to share it with people. Um, do you ever look back at, at work that, uh, that you haven't seen in a while and... and you know, I never see any of my old movies. And I really? uh, never do. And um, I don't know why. I just can't really seem to look backwards. Uh, I will now, with my kids growing up, now I'm very excited about showing them my movies. They've never seen any of my films. They've seen Bugs Malone and I think Nims Island, and those are the only two they've ever seen. And now they're starting to become the age, especially my older one, he's 12 and a half, he's starting to become the age where I got completely impassioned by films and where films spoke to me. And so I'm very excited about showing him some of my more adult films. You know? Well, then I'll take the opportunity to tell my viewers to check out Five Corners because <laughs> I love that one. Five Corners is a good one. Hotel New Hampshire is another weird find, uh, that odd find that uh, people don't remember that's quite an interesting film. Thank you so much for sitting down this Thank morning. Thank you.